Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Jeff, for uh, this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Um, I've been a, um, a patient for this office since 2015, and I'm a patient of Dr. Tent. So I, I think I know this uh, you know, staff pretty well. And when I got wind of uh, Dr. Jeff's EMF lecture, you know, I was excited, so I contacted him and uh, went over to his house. We had some fun there in the afternoon. We have had evaluated his home, and we saw a couple of pictures you know, earlier uh, from that event. Um, and then he asked me to fill in a little, you know, uh, um, come in here and do a little bit more deep dive in what we did, you know, how we do our evaluations and, and whatnot. So um, I'm here to, uh, to, to do that. And I, I think based on what he showed earlier, uh, I'm going to touch on a lot of stuff, same stuff, similar stuff, and then I can also um, divert a little bit different, you know, point different things out. So anyway, uh, this is me uh, with a proper haircut. This is me after 12 weeks without a haircut. Thank you, Governor Whitmer. Uh, but I, hopefully I, I'm presentable as I am. Um, this is what I do uh, on a part-time basis. I have this company called BioVital, RF Wellness Services, and I try to help people evalu evaluate their uh, radiation situation, uh, do an evaluation. I'm looking at the radio frequencies, uh, extreme low frequency, the magnetic fields, uh, dirt electricity, and the geopathic stress. I also try to do uh, mitigation, which means that we try to figure out ways to uh, eliminate or minimize uh, exposure to uh, the different radiation fields. Um, I have a website. Um, my phone number is there. There is a uh, website as well uh, and an um, email, you know, so you can always get hold of me. But anyway, um, so uh, let's move to the next slide. So crisis. We don't have anything called crisis. I mean, come on, you know, nobody sees anything, hears anything, smells anything, anything. You know, it's just a bright sunny day, right? But we do have a lot of issues. You know, Dr. Jeff touched on pretty much everything here. You know, fatigue, ringing in the ears, eye problems, leg cramps. And uh, a lot of it, uh, I think, is because we have Mr. Smarty Pants and his friends. And uh, they tend to pop up anyway, everywhere. And there's more and more of them every day, every week. You know, they're, they're, every year there's more smart meters, more smart devices, everything is so smart. And who doesn't want to be smart? I mean, so it's a, it's a clever way to sell technology. You know, smart this, smart that. Smart house, you know, maybe not so smart. Um, there's a jungle out there, and um, you see them antennas when you drive by. You know, Dr. Jeff said, you know, there's a certain areas that you have very high uh, density of antennas. Um, uh, there is actually an app um, that you can download. I have it on my iPhone. It's called the White Spot app, and uh, the two pictures, one to the right and one to the left here, uh, is basically a representation of what's out there. So you can see all these white spikes. Those are antenna towers. Uh, it tells you how far away they are and uh, what carriers, you know, they, they represent AT&T, T-Mobile, or whatnot. And you can see those colorful, looks like mushrooms or uh, umbrellas. And that's basically the, you know, representation of the radiation pattern. Uh, so it's, it's plentiful and, uh, you know, there are power poles, they are on, on towers, they are on um, water towers, buildings, uh, you, they, these antennas pops up pretty much everywhere. And uh, uh, Dr. Jeff talked about canaries in the coal mine. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I, over the last couple of years I noticed that when I drive in the summertime, and I, I drive a lot, I mean I drive 10, 15,000 miles a year, and a lot of it is in, in the summer, um, and I have hardly any bug splats on my car anymore. You know, I drive to Muskegon, back and forth to, uh, to Novi, and hardly anything. You know, 10, 15 years ago, you drive a uh, round trip to Myers, and you had to scrape your windshield. Uh, so where are the bees, birds, you know, the, where is the bugs going? And, um, and that kind of worries me, 
And you know, people say, ah, you know, it's uh, clim uh, climate change, is you know, temperatures are changing, climate is changing. But uh, I, I say nay, nay. I, I think actually we're looking at you know the canaries in the coal mine. You know, these guys are, are very sensitive. They use magnetic, um, uh, basically a device or magnetic uh, feelers, you know, to to orientate themselves. You know, find their way to the back to the hive. And when they, they fly through this uh, soup of radiation, they get confused, you know. So um, I, I think that's a, a strong warning sign that where, where's the, all the bugs going, you know. So that's going to be a big problem in the future. So uh, <laughs> turn out we're talking about these um, uh, electric magnetic spectrum uh, to ab nauseum, basically. Um, but I'm going to touch, uh, be a little bit technical and touch on it again. Um, this one we've seen a couple of times, so we know basically where we are talking about, you know, where we are. We are basically existing in the visible spectrum. We are blind as bats, you know, on either side. Uh, that's why we have to have our equipment to measure, you know, okay. Uh, we, we are focusing on the in, be, beyond infrared down in the microwaves. That's what we are doing here with my, with my instruments. And then you have other instruments to, to capture the Geiger counters and whatnot to capture the, the, the higher frequencies, X-rays and gamma rays. So we are very, as humans, we are very, very limited what we can feel and, and experience. And that's why we have to take technology to our help, to our aid, to, uh, to go beyond that. So uh, radio waves, just to make it, try to make it simple, this is the, the analog radio waves. Uh, the, the ideal form is basically a nice uh, sine wave. It's unmodulated, it's just the same all the time. It's like waves on the ocean, just moving forward. Um, then we start to transfer data on the radio waves. Then we use the frequency modulation. So you can see the frequency, which frequency is basically the distance between the tops of the wave train. So now the tops of the wave trains are changing. Uh, so the, some of them are tighter together, some of them are longer to, uh, in between. So that's a frequency modulation. So you can transfer data with the frequency modulation. And then you have a receiver that can you know, convert that to, to sound or whatnot. And even before that, in the early stage of radio, we had uh, the amplitude modulation, which was basically that uh, uh, the frequency was the same, so the distance between the, the tops is the same, but now the amplitude, which is the height of these wave trains, are now changing. So at that time, they had data transfer with the amplitude um, modulation. So what's new is our uh, digital radio waves. Now, the pattern here kind of resembles the, out, the analog uh, wave, but they, they generated it differently. So because this is digital, this is ones and zeros, uh, and not the analog, you know, just you know, change over time. So now they had to change, the, the, they could create a wave pattern by these spikes, you know. So there's ones and zeros, and they pack them together. And uh, you know, it basically f creates this form that, that transfers the data. But the, the problem with digital uh, signals are the spikes, because they're extremely high energy. And I mean, you can see the curve. I mean, it, it looks like it could sting you. You know, it's very, very sharp, very, very uh, pointy. And those spikes or points, that's what creates problem uh, with our bodies and our tissue and whatnot. And then back to our dirty electricity, the superimposed waves. So basically, you come a clean um, electricity wave is supposed to come from, your, from, your, from the power uh, grid. That's not always the case. Uh, it comes into your house. You hook up your computer, your, your um, pigtail light bulbs, uh, appliances of all sorts. And they don't just consume energy. They also give back to your, your wires uh, this pattern. So I think that's because it's very similar uh, with the dirt electricity. I think also that's why the dirt electricity is also giving you uh, uh, very similar uh, health issues or, or wellness issues uh, that we already talked about. So, so this is something also that's uh, you know, 
creates problems and it's, it's all wires in, in your house and it can actually come from the from the power grid you know so so it's not just the pure uh, pure sine wave that comes in you know from from the utility pole okay so that's the the technical part now uh, frequency testing evaluation that's what this company that I'm uh, working uh, with uh, will try to do for for um, people that feel that they want to know uh, what's going on you know in the neighborhood or in the side of the house maybe they have some some uh, health issues that they hard to hard to explain uh, it's not I I everyone that has the ability to go to dr jeff and and you know talk about it then uh, he, he knows so much he has the background to kind of iron out what might be the problem but you know most doctors, I would say, uh, are pretty clueless about um, you know what can be behind this, the symptoms. So anyway, so uh, um, I come out. I, depending on what we want to test for, you know, we test the house, the property, the neighborhood, your work, whatever you know, where you feel that like you want to have ev evaluated. Um, I compile a report. Uh, you saw an example earlier. I'm going to show you a better. Uh, more extensive uh, report I did here uh, in a minute. Uh, then we can decide to target areas that is of trouble. You know, we can find solution to minimize uh, exposure, and so-called mitigation. And then a very important is also retest after you know you you put countermeasures in place. So you can actually create a, a, a worse scenario because there might be some unintended consequences. You know, you put a shield up, uh, you know, in your bedroom against the, the outer wall uh, because there's something out there that transmits, you know, through the walls. And then all of a sudden you have the microwave start bouncing around and you can create a hotspot somewhere else. Um, so you have to detect that and, you know, you know, act accordingly. So before and after is very, very important. Okay, so this is a uh, recent survey I did. It's uh, actually in my own neighborhood where I live. Uh, the city uh, decided to, or wants to, erect a 300-foot tower uh, right on the beach uh, where we live. It's a very strategic location. And um, they haven't said straight out, but I'm, I'm not surprised if that, you know, within a year or so, we have tons of uh, you know cell phone antennas up uh, in this tower. Um, so I got involved with the neighborhood association and I canvassed the neighborhood here one one Saturday. Um, I picked some some uh, strategic uh, points or places, and I had my RF meter. I'm going to show that meter here in the demo here in a few minutes. Um, so basically, what I I, I put my my, uh, my areas where I wanted to typically is road intersections so they're easy to, to uh, identify. Uh, for fun, I, I had my iPhone 6 with me, so I checked how many bars I had at every location. And um, then my acoustic meter, I, I took the peak values, the fluctuating uh, peak and the average. And uh, you can see here that pretty much everything is green, which indicates that is, we have safe values uh, according to the Bioinitiative Report 2012. Uh, we have a few areas that has the, the pink, which is then elevated and marginal safe. And I think it because these areas have a direct line of sight to the closest tower. And you can see that the closest tower is 2.5, uh, 2.8 miles away. So it's quite a distance, but you can see it sticking up over the trees and it's a lake surface, so it's, there's uh, no obstructions, so that the radiation can, can travel free, freely. So this is the before, this is what we have today. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if this tower, you know, going to be built here in the future, you know, see how, how these values are changing. So anyway, so try to find uh, some ammo um, to go against the city to prove that, you know, this is not really a good idea, you know. We'd like to have it somewhere else, you know, push, push the problem to some another neighborhood. That's not really fair, but, you know, <laughs> what do you do? You know, we're always looking out for, you know, uh, where we live and, you know, really don't want to change anything. And, and it, it's a tough uh, 
it's a, it's a t tough situation because the municipality and the uh, cell phone carriers, they're, they're heavy waiters and uh, they have a lot of money and power. And if they want to have something done, you know, a, a tower in a specific location, it's very hard to, to, uh, to fight it. So anyway, um, I wanted to show the city what we might face in the future if they're going to build this tower. Um, so just a few miles up the road where I live, like three miles up the road, we have a, uh, have a neighborhood that I think is very close to what we might face in the future. Um, we can see, uh, oh, sorry, I need to, there we go. That's the one. All right, a lot of red stuff here. Anyway, so in this neighborhood, they have a twin tower. It's two towers about 100 feet apart for some reason that, that is littered with uh, cell phone antennas. And the uh, bad part here is that we have very close proximity to, uh, to houses. So we are looking at 150 yards to 300 yards, basically. We have a, a, a street, there's multiple duplexes. There is a kindergarten facility. There is an elementary, uh, element, Lincoln Park Elementary School is there. Uh, everything is just, you know, within, you know, a few hundred yards. And you can see here that, you know, now we have everything is deep red. We have a little pink, a little green here, but then now almost a thousand yards away. But this is a big concern because now these values jump 10 times. And uh, we are talking residential area. People live here, okay? You, you stay here. The, the kids are in, in school, you know, six, eight hours a day. People work, you know, the, the staff in school, they get exposed to this. Um, all the houses down the street are exposed to this 24-7, 365. Um, so I, I think this is a good example of what we might face. So I produced this, I put everything together, I send it to the city, and you know, we'll, we'll see what, it, uh, what happens you know, in, uh, uh, in the future. But uh, it's interesting to know the, at least the before, now we'll see what happens you know, if, if this tower is going to get built. Um, just a side note, uh, uh, I don't know if how many uh, thought about it, but if you th do think about it, you know, drive through your cities, you know, how many cell phone towers are actually on school property? Uh, either sm dab smack metal of, of the, of, you know, next to the football field or next to the main building or at least uh, in the out outskirts of the school property. So, I mean, it's good with... Uh, good connection, right? But, you know, is, you know, is it really worth it, you know, to put these high radiation, you know, uh, levels right over the you know, head of the kids, you know, like Dr. Jeff said, you know, canaries in the coal mines, kids and animals, you know, and in this case, you know, the schools, it's definitely kids. So, um, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that for sure. And uh, when you think about these things, you see them all, that, you know, everywhere, you know. You, but you have to kind of take the red pill to, to, uh, to, to wake up and, and uh, start looking around. And then you see all these things. Okay, so what does this mean? Dr. Jeff talked a lot with, uh, about um, 5G. And so this is what we typically uh, see. This is a five, 4G antenna tower. So it's a mon this is a monopole you know, littered with the antennas uh, up at the top. The new 5G, um, those antennas are going to look different. This is a picture from Chicago, I believe. Uh, so now the antennas move down to street level. So these are the top of light poles, uh, power poles, uh, um, you know, on buildings. There's much more street level. Th these guys are maybe 150, 200 feet up. Uh, they're like two, three miles apart. These guys are going to be maybe 500 feet apart, you know, much more, you know, closer to where we live and um, uh, our lives. And um, just another side note here, 5G, 4G, uh, Dr. Jeff didn't touch on it, but when it comes to health effects, um, for some reason when they de develop these systems, they, they put the frequencies in certain spots. Uh, for, for the 4G, they put the, uh, the frequency 
range right where uh, the, the radio waves excites the, the water molecules. So it's basically a, a mini microwave that you're holding in your hand, putting in your pocket, or you know, the computer is, is, is uh, communicating with 2.4 to 5 gigahertz, and that's basically a, a microwave. So the heat tissue that create issues with, with the water molecules, because I mean the body is 80% water, so of course the, the body is going to respond to, to those frequencies. Well, it happened to be that the 5G, uh, I've heard that uh, the 60 gigahertz range, you know, give or take, uh, ox uh, um, affects the oxy uh, oxygen molecules. So now the new system here will start to monkey around with the oxygen. And I don't know, but it makes me nervous to think about, you know, these radiation fields going to start monkeying around with the oxygen. What's going to happen with the oxygen trying to bind to the hemoglobin in your blood, you know, for, you know, the, 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 the uh, exchange in your lungs uh, when they start to, to, you know, uh, uh, excite the, the oxygen molecules. So that's a big health issue that nobody talks about. I've heard about it and, and uh, that makes me nervous because if, uh, you know, the oxygen levels are low as it is, if the, this system now starts tim tampering with oxygen on top of everything else, you know, it, it might be tough to breathe, you know, and then you have all sorts of other health issues coming your way. And, you know, if you, uh, if you pay attention to what happens around you, you know, if somebody starts to put up these antennas or nodes, you know, pay attention to how you feel, how you respond, you know, over time, you know, after this change happens, you know, you still fine dandy, or do you have starting to have issues to breathe, issues to sleep, etc. So, uh, just be aware of you know the technology out there, and, and um, you 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 have to be able to feel you know how you respond to this yourself. Okay, so again, what does it mean? No Wi-Fi. <laughs> Ah, can you be so cruel? You know, nobody can live without Wi-Fi. You know, um, my whole livelihood, you know, revolves around Wi-Fi. You know, I have my laptop and my cell phone, and you know, everything I do is, you know, on the on the run. You know, I can't sit home. I can't be tethered to the wall. You know, your stupid uh, um, hard lines and stuff. You know, no, 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 no. Everything has to be be uh, uh, wireless. Uh, I understand. I mean, I I I enjoy wireless technology as well. Uh, it's a necessary evil, um, but uh, I try to minimize my exposure. I try to be smart about it. I have my my little devices to, to protect me, and, and I, I, I'm more conscious about you know what I'm using and try to you know minimize my exposure. And um, I'll we'll talk about that in a minute here. Okay, so what can you do? So the, the RF damage or damage fr from this, you know, uh, radiation exposure uh, is cumulative. So it means that the dangers develops or increase over time. So if you can't eliminate it, you have to do something. And the, you have two best friends, the uh, minimize time of exposure and maximize the distance from the RF source. So, so time at exposure minimized and the distance are your best friends. Um, you back off from the source, you know, it just, it's diminished quite rapidly. Um, you know, you don't need to back off far, you know, so you just have a tenth or a hundredth of the radiation you know, next to it, to the device. And you can shield yourself or the areas where you spend the most time. So inside is probably the, the most imp uh, easiest to, to, you can eliminate the, all the RF emitting devices. Uh, you can hardwire your PC, uh, remove the cordless phone, the decked phone, etc. So no Wi-Fi. And that's typically what we have in, in my house. Uh, all the computers, all the TVs are hardwired. Uh, we do have our cell phones, of course, but uh, that's pretty much it. And it means new Bluetooth. Because Bluetooth, even though it's a different name, is still similar. It's a wireless system. Uh, and I, I, we're going to talk about that also in the slide here a little bit later on. All right. 
more things to do. Shield walls, windows facing towers, or the RF source, Dr. Jeff showed. Uh, the black paint that is uh, conductive that you can paint. You can actually create a Faraday's cage inside your home or, or a room by painting the walls, putting film on the windows. And um, I've seen, um, seen videos on doing that. It's, it's a tremendous job. It's costly, but it works. It, it, it's effective. Uh, you can shield your bed uh, either with an extra wall of uh, aluminum foil or something, or maybe drape a, a silver cloth uh, canopy over the bed um, because the, the silver then uh, uh, protects you. It's, it's a conductive sh uh, sheeting to uh, take care of, of uh, the, the radiation. Um, as I said, eliminate all the RF emitting devices. And uh, then again, test you know, before and after. You know, is it better? Is it worse? You know, what did we do right? What did we wrong? Do we need to do something else? And if nothing else helps, you know, you, you might have to, uh, to uh, consider, you know, selling and moving. You know, it's, it's a tough decision. But, you know, if you really have issues, we can trace back to, uh, to RF exposure that, you know, that, that's, there's no going back. That, that's the problem. When you, when you start to develop the, the hypersensitivity for, for, for these things, that is just going to get worse. You know, that, that's the, the, the tough truth. All right. So... Um, I'll take some time here and uh, make a few demonstrations. I have some, some devices with me here that we're going to hook up, and uh, I have my uh, RF meter with me. Uh, the thing I like with this one, the reason I bought it, is that it has an audio function, so I can actually listen in uh, to the noise that uh, it picks up, and uh, it's, sometimes it's helpful to determine what the source might be yeah, by listening in to, to, uh, to the noise it, it uh, emits. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, a, a home uh, a router, you know, Wi-Fi router, uh, typically sounds like a, like a machine gun, like, a, you know, rat -tat 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 -tat, it's very, you know, it's pulsing very hard. So that's, that's an easy way to, to determine that, you know, either it's one in the house or it might be the neighbor's uh, Wi-Fi router. So um, I'm just going to have a minute here to, to hook them up and then we'll see what we can get sound. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take the opportunity to show a little bit, you know, different devices, you know, how they sound, and uh, they kind of emphasize, you know, what we're looking at, you know, and, and uh, you know, that typically you don't see or hear, but uh, there's a lot of action going on, you know, that we can detect with uh, the the devices we have to measure with. So I'm just going to start first. This is my uh, acoustic meter that I use for the RF uh, evaluation. It takes uh, frequency responses from 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz. So it takes pretty much everything wireless that we use today. And uh, again, I'm going to start listening in just to the room here and see if, you know what, what situation we are facing right now where we do this recording. So don't pick up much. Uh, so yeah, not too bad. Uh, you know, you don't hear much sound, and the values are not you know awfully high. So that's a good thing. Uh, you know, this seems like this. Uh, okay, maybe picking up a router. You can hear that. Ta -ta 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 sound. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. You know, that's uh, that's typically what you you hear when you go, you know, in your house or in your neighborhood. So that's one thing. Uh, now we're gonna do a. Uh, this is a uh, cordless phone, a deck phone. Uh, maybe not used as much these days. Uh, Ten years ago, there was a hot commodity. Now everybody's using their. Uh, uh, cell phones, but you know, still they might be around. They might be sitting on your, uh, you know, nightstand next to your bed or in the kitchen, and you don't think much about it. Okay, so I'm going to hook that up. And see what we get. Oh, 
Okay, so here we have quite an uh, aggressive signal, and we are p uh, the meter is pegging out 6.0. It's more than 6.0, uh, so we have a heavy, you know, uh, field. Uh, the average is basically uh, around 1,000 to 1,200 microwatts per square meter. So, and uh, the bad boy is actually. Um, the handset when it's out of range. So now this one is just uh, 6,000, 7,000 microwatts per square meter. So, so this one is extremely aggressive when it comes to the radiation. Um, the handset is about 1,200 to 1,400, so that's still active. But even if you put them together, you know, you, you know, now you're supposed to, you think that, well, now it doesn't need to communicate anymore because the handset is, is in the base. Uh, and, but it's not the case. It's still four, three, four thousand uh, microwatts per square meter. So this device, even though it looks benign, is extremely powerful. It radiates all the time, which is kind of weird because the European uh, uh, deck phones don't radiate when the handset is in the cradle. So I don't know why uh, American uh, phones are made this way, but I guess it's because we're Americans. We just have to take it, you know. So, but anyway, so I would not have this one sitting on my bedstand next to my pillow. Uh, you know, stay away from it. You know, best thing is just to toss it out uh, because it's a very aggressive. Um, uh, emitter of uh, RF for sure. Okay, so that's that one. Um, okay, uh, next I like to just take my own uh, iPhone 6 and I'm going to turn it uh, into active mode and uh, see what happens here. Okay. All right, so now it's six points, it's pegging out the meter already. The average is about 3,000 microwatts per square meter. And um, I think it's because I just uh, activated it. It takes a while for it to settle down. Um, and uh, then it kind of go dormant. But it doesn't. Uh, do we have something else that radiates around here? Oh, there we go. Now it's settled down. Okay, so now it's it's quiet. It's uh, the average, uh, you know, feel went down quite a bit. So this is typically what happens when it sits there, you know. And uh, Jeff, would you? Uh, Try to call my phone and see what happens. All right, now so it pegged the meter again. So it's really strong, and then you have this one, you know, next to your eye, to your ear, and uh, you have it there for quite some time. So it it's it does emit a lot of uh, radiation. So now it goes dormant again. So yeah, so that's basically uh, those things. Uh, just for fun, before I left for this uh, uh, lecture, I picked up a little Cobra walkie-talkie and I found in a drawer. So I said, ah, no, should I say, no, this is walkie-talkie. It, 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 it can't be much. But I said, well, you know, why, why not? So basically, now this one is 5,000 microwatts per square centimeter. I don't hear any sound, though, which is kind of a... Uh, surprising to me, but you know the the reading here. I mean, it pegs the meter. Now it's 17,000, you know, maximum. So this one, even though it's tiny, you know, it, it just throws out a ton of radiation. And again, you have it next to your ear, you know, next to your head. So there's a lot of devices there, you know, that d can do us harm, and uh, you know, you need to be uh, aware of it. And uh, you know, again. Uh, minimize time exposure, maximize, you know, distance to your, the devices. You know, those are the, your best friends. Okay, I'm going to skip the wireless mouse, the microwave oven. Um, the microwave ovens, those can be really, really 
uh, aggressive, and the old ones they spew out, out a lot of uh, radiation, even behind the machine. So if you have a a room, you know, on the other side of the kitchen wall, you know, you, you get plenty of radiation when you run the microwave oven as well. Okay, be less smart. Go back to the dumb devices. It's not always smart to be smart, you know. I see this all the time, you know, you're running, go walking around the city, you know, you see these little earbuds, you know, white you know, the little antenna hanging down. Um, or you have the, the over-the-air uh, the headphones, also you know, wireless, Bluetooth, whatnot. Um, then you have the, the radiation right into your ear canal and right into, you know, it's just an inch from the brain. And uh, you, you have these on, you know, for hours at, you know, time. Um, also think about, you know, uh, back, back what Dr. Jeff said with the radio over the heart, you know. Um, you have these uh, devices in your ear, you know, people that work at Starbucks, McDonald's, uh, grocery stores, security guards, you know, everybody that's running around with a radio set, you know, hanging to, uh, attached to his ear, um, have this, you know, radio exposure, radio frequency exposure all the time. So nothing good can come out of that. Uh, this is what I use. Uh, this is a corded um, earbuds. They call this is a uh, radio uh, radio armor radio armor uh, brand. There's different uh, brands as well. The the special thing with these are to min really minimize what you get in your ear. Uh, is that uh, the those little ear buds here? That's where the speaker sits, and uh, from there on up, it's just a uh, air tube. So when I listen to my music, it's airways. Same that I speak to you now. Um, that goes in there and whatever magnetic fields are generated are down on my chest. So, so these are the ones I like. And uh, Dr. Mercola has uh, the blue tube devices and uh, there's plenty of those, you know, for, for people that want to um, uh, research that. So anyway, um, 5G, 4G is coming everywhere, strong into your house. Smart thing, you can run your dishwasher, it communicates with your cell phone. Uh, you can set the wash cycles and you know, it communicates errors and everything to your phone. Uh, again, wireless communication, another source for, for uh, RF. If you're embarrassed, embarrassed because you're, uh, your um, stove is an old clunker, you know, uh, you can you know, fear not because now you can buy a power plug that goes between the jack and the plug and now your stove is uh, smart and it communicates with your cell phone. Now you can you know, set, set cooking times and stuff. Uh, meet the smart toaster uh, that gives you uh, the weather forecast with a uh, suit printer, I guess it is. Uh, the way it looks like, you could probably play, uh, play some uh, video games instead of uh, reading the newspaper in the morning. And uh, behold, uh, tweeting fridge uh, so you can have, you know you never lose contact with your friends so at least well these are just you know something that I don't think they exist right now but uh, they, um, they they I wouldn't be surprised if they come up you know with stuff like this in the near future and another thing is that if you can control your appliances they will control you as well so that's another aspect of wireless communication all right, so I'm going to wrap up here uh, with uh, personal wearables. Um, I wear this one every day. I have it on me right now. It's uh, something called Biogeometry, developed by Dr. Ibrahim Karim, a uh, very interesting uh, person. And uh, he did some great job in Germany, a, a town that was heavily radiated. Uh, citizens were really sick, and he put his... Uh, biogeometry in place and uh, got the citizens back to to shape again. Uh, this is a friend of mine, uh, Sophia Smallstorm. She has an avatarproduct.com. She sells uh, mother things, uh, ce cell phone shields or, or um, uh, cases that has uh, silver lining in them. So, you know, you can carry them with you and they protect you from from most of the radiation. It still communicates perfectly, but you know, you have the silver lining against your body uh, that cuts down maybe 90% of the radiation. 
And uh, ladies, for God's sake, don't put your smartphones in your bras. I've seen that myself. And there's an increase in breast cancer when you can actually see the outline of the cancer tumor, you know, outlined perfectly with the, with the cell phone. So that's not a good place to keep your, uh, keep your cell phone. Okay, I believe that's uh, my uh, speech. And uh, yeah, so you can reach me at this uh, website. My phone number is here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to service, you know, southern Michigan here between uh, east and west coast. So uh, if you're interested, you know, get contact maybe, uh, with me and uh, we can go from there. All right, so thank you for the opportunity.